Welcome to the Rio Cold Start tutorial. We will go through the Rio Cold Start checklist without actually starting the engines as we can run all the Rio systems using ground power and external cooling air. Please ask the ground crew to connect ground electric power and ground air supply and then select the Rio seat position. Chief, turn on the ground Press power. When done. Copy. Chief, connect ground air supply. Ground power is now on. Copy. Okay, we begin by checking the communication between the pilot and the Rio using the ICS. As we are using the ICS currently, we can skip this step. This is also a good opportunity to adjust ICS settings and volumes to your liking. At this time, we also power on the data link, the TACAN by setting it to transmit receive, and the ANARC-182 or UHF-2 by setting the mode selector to transmit receive plus guard. Press spacebar when ready to move on. Now, switch on the oxygen to your mask. We now check current fuel quantity using the fuel totalizer and adjust console and instrument lighting using the interior light control panel on the right side console. In addition, we also check the caution, advisory, ECM, and DDI lights when the pilot selects the LTS option on the master test panel. He has now done so. Please note that the data link needs to be on to allow the DDI lights to illuminate. When ready to move on, press spacebar. Now the pilot will select the instrument option on the master test panel. This should make the fuel totalizer indicate around 2,000 pounds. Normally this will be reported to the pilot before he moves on. When you've checked the indicated amount on the fuel totalizer, press spacebar to continue. The last item to check before engines start is to arm both ejection seats visually verify that the pilot ejection seat is armed on the top of his seat. When done, inform the pilot that you will close the canopy and then close it. Close the canopy using the keyboard command now. Default keybind is left control plus C. Normally, the pilot would now start the engines. The Rio monitors the pilot procedures and keeps an eye on the external environment to ensure maximum safety during the engine startup sequence. We will now move on using external power and cooling air instead. Press spacebar to continue. It's now time to start the WCS and the AUG-9, as well as setting the liquid cooling to AUG-9. Set the WCS switch to standby, the liquid cooling switch to AUG-9, and the IRTV switch to ON. The display warm-up takes slightly more than 30 seconds. When both the DDD and TID lights up, press spacebar to continue. We will now start the INS alignment. We will begin by entering current aircraft position and altitude. This information can be seen on the kneeboard brought up using right shift plus K. As our own aircraft symbol is already hooked, as indicated in the readout above the TID, we can now enter the aircraft position from the kneeboard. This is done via the keypad on the cap. Begin by pressing 1 or the LAT button, then press northeast to select north and then enter the latitude from the kneeboard. Verify that the readout in the data buffer on top of the TID is correct, and then enter it using the Enter button. If incorrect, please clear and begin again from the LAT button. Now enter the longitude the same way as the latitude, but begin by pressing the Clear button, and then the 6, or Long button. Then enter the digits, and verify, as per latitude. When own aircraft position is correct on the data readouts on the TID, press Spacebar to continue. We now need to enter the aircraft altitude, which can also be seen on the knee pad. Press the clear button, then the alt or floor button, the northeast button for a positive elevation, and then enter the altitude digits. If correct, enter the altitude into the computer using the enter button. If not, press clear and start over. We are now ready to begin aligning the INS. Set the nav mode selector to ground align. The TID will now switch to show the INS Align status bar. The three vertical lines, or ticks, marks Course Align Complete, Alert Launch Criteria, and Fine Align Complete. 
Progression is indicated by the check mark moving to the right. It will become a diamond when passed the alert launch criteria, and a dot will appear inside it when final line is complete. Alert launch criteria is the minimum needed for guided AIM-7 and AIM-54 launch. We will wait for final line in this case, but we'll continue the checklist while we wait. The digits to the left of the status bar are time elapsed in alignment. The first digit represents minutes, the second one tenths of a minute. So 1.5 would mean 1 minute and 30 seconds. When on the carrier, we would not have to enter own aircraft position, but instead set the mode switch on the data link reply and antenna control panel to kind slash waypoint, and we would use the CVA align mode instead. The ship's INS data will be used to align the IMU. Press spacebar when the alignment is in progress and you are ready to continue. While the alignment progresses, we will now start the ALR-67 RWR by setting its power switch to ON. Set the DECM knob to standby to warm up the DECM. Set the data ADF switch to both. Erect the standby attitude gyro by clicking and turning the knob until the indication overlays the horizon indicator. Now is also a good time to adjust the display settings, set up the TID symbology to display, and enter additional waypoints into the WCS. The ANALE-39 can also be set up further to program chaff or flare release programs. Please consult the manual for further details on these subjects. If you have now reached fine align as indicated by a diamond with a centered dot on the right side of the alignment status bar, press spacebar to continue. Otherwise, Wait until you have a fine align, and then press spacebar. Be advised that the alignment on the ground might take as long as 7 to 8 minutes in total. Feel free to take a break until you're done. To complete the alignment, set the nav mode knob to INS. Normal tactical TID readout will now resume. At this stage, you can tell the pilot that we're ready to taxi during a normal startup. The last thing on our list, which can be done while moving, is to enter the manual magnetic variation from the kneeboard. To do this, set the cap category knob to nav and select the magnetic variation function button. We can now read the calculated magnetic variation and the manual magnetic variation. The manual variation will be zero at this stage. Press the heading or eight button on the cap keypad. Press the southwest or northeast button depending on if the magnetic variation on the knee pad is negative or positive and then enter the digits as per earlier cap entries. When correctly entered, the Magnetic Variation Function button can be deselected to exit Magnetic Variation Display and Input. We have now finished the Rio Cold Start. Feel free to further familiarize yourself with the Rio Cockpit or exit the mission. This concludes the tutorial.